Well, good morning. Glad you're all with us this morning for morning worship. And if you're watching us on Channel 6 or around the world on our live stream, we'd like to welcome you as well to uh, F. Worth United Methodist Church. I want to draw your attention to some announcements this, announcements this morning. Uh, first off, if you're here, today is your lucky day if you stick around. We've got lunch over in the uh, New Life Center. You don't have to bring a thing. It's all provided for. Just bring your appetites. It's all put on by the mustard seed class. So that is going on directly that away after worship this morning. I uh, want to remind if you're a member of the church council, we have a meeting this afternoon at 4 o'clock to start getting our documents together ready for charge conference. And, of course, the Bible study, the book of Romans, again tonight at 5 o'clock up, up in the TV studio. And, of course, the Bible study book of Job continues on Tuesday and Wednesday of this week. We have our normal Wednesday activities, and Thursday the UMW circles all meet, so want to uh, let you know about all that. But now it's time to put it all away. All the troubles, all the grief, all the, the mixed emotions, and focus solely on worshiping God as we begin worship this morning. Good morning. If you will please stand and join me in singing our hymn of praise, I Love Thy Kingdom, Lord. As we remain standing, let us join together in our call to worship. Throughout God's world this day, Christian churches are celebrating the Eucharist as one family dining together in one room under one roof. Our sisters and brothers in Africa, Europe, Central America, and Asia, and all Neither powers nor principalities shall stop us, nor deter our purpose, our sense of mission, or our, or our challenge to go forth as disciples into every town, village, and crossroads, proclaiming the love of Christ for all creation. In Christ's love, there is no east, no west, no north, no south, but only one spirit. Let us praise Christ. May this holy meal empower each of us to be agents of hope and peace in a time of uncertainty and strife. May Christ bless the worldwide communion of the church this day. Now, if you'd be seated, we'll invite our children to come up for the children's moment. Good morning, 
everyone. <laughs> How's everybody's week been? Good. Good. Anything exciting happen? No. No, there was no homecoming parade or anything. There was. There was a football team. There was a homecoming game. I saw Ethan in a car being really cool and throwing candy. Oh, you didn't throw the candy? No? Who all got candy at the parade? I know, I was with you. So, do you remember what we talked about last week? What? <laughs> you don't remember? So, we're in the month of October, right? And what happens in October? Halloween. Do any of those costumes scare you? No. None of the costumes scare you? Well, some of them do scare me. They do scare me. Some of them do. Oh, I know. We've got a couple weeks before we can see the costumes. Do you ever get scared of anything in life? What do you get scared of? Ghosts and haunted houses. Ghosts and haunted houses. Maybe ghosts. Ghosts. Who else gets scared of anything? I'm horrified of clowns. Horrified of clowns. How about on this side? Who's scared of something? No one. Nobody is scared of anything over here? No, we're all brave. All brave? I'm not scared. You're not scared. So, who all is afraid of the dark? Did your sister just tell on you? So, raise your hand if you're scared of something. So just all of us up here, nobody out there is scared of anything? <laughs> you do? You're scared of the dark, Sophia? All right, Ethan, what are you scared of? Psycho killers. Psycho killers, yes, that would be very scary. <laughs> you did? So I know sometimes things get really scary, but you know what the Bible says about that? In Second Timothy, it says, God did not give us a spirit that makes us afraid. He gave us a spirit of power and love and self-control. So what does that mean? Any takers? It means that God and the Holy Spirit makes us brave. And because of God, we have no reason to be afraid of anything. So remember, sometimes when you get scared... All you need to do is just pray to God, and he will help you. So, let's do our prayer hands. Let's bow our heads and repeat after me. Dear Heavenly Father, we are so thankful that you are our protector, and you help us to not ever be afraid, and that we can count on you when we get scared. Amen. If you would, please join me for our prayer of confession. God of compassion and mercy, we are wounded and wounding children. We bring our wounded selves, our divided society, and our broken world before you. We seek your healing and transforming grace. It is easy for us to point the finger at others, yet we know that we all need your forgiveness. So we lift into your presence today not only the victims of conflicts, but also those we have called enemy. Break down the walls of hatred, distrust, and bitterness, and open a way for us to reach one another in truth and love. Enable us to build a society where all can belong, to share our gifts in mutual respect, and to seek the kingdom you offer us. Through Jesus Christ, the Christ we pray. Amen. God's assurance for us comes in many different words. 
This morning from Matthew 11, verse 28, he does say to us, Come to me, all of you that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. As Jesus Christ proclaimed this, take this as your invitation to release your burdens as he has given us the ability to do so. In Jesus Christ's name, amen. Now let us stand and let's greet each other in the name of Christian love. Please may you make your way to your seats. We'll do our songs of praise and worship.
Amen. You may be seated. Spence, it's Dad. Calling to see how the gig went last night. Give me a call when you get a chance, okay? I'll never break out. It's a tough business. There's no one here, of course. You got to get out of here. Impossible dream. No talent. I'm no good. I am no good. I sound awful. Forget it. I should just quit. See my guitar. Mm. My guitar. Maybe you left it in the club. something for you. No way. Your guitar. Good luck in the city, eh? It's an acoustic. I lost it. What kind of a son are you? Terrible son. Spence, quick note to let you know you are a very talented musician. Hang in there. Be patient. Work hard at it. You'll never guess what came back to the farm. Glad it did and is now back with you. <laughs> Nourish your gifts. Stay rooted. Remember who you are. Love, Dad. Our scripture this morning comes from 2 Timothy 1, verses 1 through 14. Hear what God may be speaking to you today. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus, by the will of God, for the sake of the promise of life that is in Christ Jesus, to Timothy, my beloved child, grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and Christ Jesus our Lord. I am grateful to God whom I worship with a clear conscience, as my ancestors did, when I remember you constantly in my prayers night and day. Recalling your tears, I long to see, to see you so that I may be filled with joy. I am reminded of your sincere faith, a faith that lived first in your grandmother, Lois, and your mother, Eunice, and now I am sure lives in you. 
For this reason, I remind you to rekindle the gift of God that is within you through the laying on my, on, of my hands. For God did not give us a spirit of cowardice, but rather a spirit of power and of love and of self-discipline. Do not be ashamed, then, of the testimony about our Lord uh, or of me, his prisoner. But join with me in suffering for the gospel, relying on the power of God, who saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace. This grace was given to us in Christ Jesus before the ages began. But it has now been revealed through the appearing of our Savior, Christ Jesus, who abolished death and brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. For this gospel I was appointed a herald and an apostle and a teacher. And for this reason I suffer as I do. But I am not ashamed, for I know the one in whom I have been put my trust in, and I am sure that he is able to guard until that day, what I have entrusted to him. Hold on to the standard of sound teaching that you have heard from me in the faith and love that are in Christ Jesus. Guard the good treasure entrusted to you with the help of the Holy Spirit living in us. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Well, last week we started talking about uh, Paul and, and Timothy and the relationship they had. And in these letters that we, we have in the, the New Testament of the relationship that they shared. And um, today kind of picks up uh, the beginning of that second letter. Um, I suspect when you went to school, um, you were taught how to write a letter, weren't you? Um, I don't know if children learned how to write a letter today or not. Um, I think I may have been in the last of those generations that were. Maybe they, they are. Um, but, you know, there's kind of a standard form to a letter. And, and he begins his letter with a salutation. You know, he, you know, I, Paul, an apostle, uh, writing to you. And then names Timothy, who he's writing to. And, you know, that's kind of how we begin our letters. Uh, now, maybe we write emails, uh, probably occasionally text. My son thinks when I write uh, text messages, they, they sound like emails. Um, my emails sound like letters. You know, I, I, you know I, when I started college, I had a typewriter in my room. By the time I finished college, I had a, uh, a computer that my dad had given to me, one of the early Apple computers. And, um, and so I was in that generation that, of transition. You know, we, we kind of started one place and we ended in a different one and, uh, and, and moved forward. But, but, but for Paul and for people in his day, there was a very typical way you wrote a letter. And he, he writes this letter uh, to, to Timothy in such a way. Um, after the salutation, there's uh, a prayer of thanksgiving. And he, you know, about how he's thankful for uh, Timothy and the faith that he's been handed down. And, uh, and he talks a little bit about his life, you know, and his past. That uh, your grandmother, Lois, had such faith. And your mother, Eunice, uh, and now it's been passed on to you. And I know you still have it. Uh, I'm sure you do. You still have that faith within you. Um, you can tell there's been some distance in time. He, uh, he, he wants to assume that. He's pushing forward in that. But, um, but there's, you know, there, he doesn't want to assume too much, which I'm sure still lives in you. There's, there's this, um, you know, he's leaving room for in case maybe there's been a, a time of distance. Maybe he knows a bit that there's been a little bit of distance um, that can happen in our lives and in our faith. I don't know if you've ever experienced it, um, where, you know, a moment when we've come to faith and, gosh, every day is just on fire as can be, and then a time where it seems to have slowed down and uh, it's not as uh, vital 
in our lives, and it doesn't seem as, as uh, uplifting as it once did. It can happen to us. It, uh, it does happen to us. And so he's writing to him. There's a context in which the letter comes, too, that is that Paul's writing to him from prison. Um, that's a little different place to write from, isn't it? Uh, I've not been in that spot, fortunately. Um, we've not, you know, but if, but if we've been in that place and we have that distance and we can't cross it easily, uh, the letter is what can do that. And he writes to him um, from the place of prison. It says that, um, that, that he is in a place of suffering, uh, suffering on behalf of uh, the faith that, that he has in Christ Jesus. And, and he doesn't wear that as a, um, a situation of woe is me, but he wears it as a place of pride, um, that, that he is following Christ, and whatever comes his way comes to him as a part of that. And so he writes from this place of suffering, and it's a place of suffering in the whole church. Um, there, there's difficulty uh, for Christians all over. Uh, it's just beginning, but it's, it's beginning to get, get hard. There have been real difficulties for those who are, uh, who are Jewish, and in the early days, many, if not, I mean early, obviously the earliest days, all the Christians were Jewish. But as the faith has grown out and spread out, is including others. But, but so the suffering of those who are Jewish in faith um, is, is shared by those who are Christian. And, um, and the persecution that, that comes their way is, is hard. Um, they're known for the way they love and care for each other. One of the things that was said about the, the early Christians is see how they not only love and care for their own, but how they care for our poorest as well. It's one of the marks of, of the Christians in that early time is that, that they had a love and care for those who were broken and most in need in their lives. He assures him that he's grounded in the faith. The faith is something that was there for you in your grandmother and in your mother and now is in you. And um, at this time of suffering, um, he doesn't want him to interpret as shame. You know, there's time of difficulty. It's not as easy as it was at the beginning. But he doesn't want them to interpret that as shame. You shouldn't take that on as, as uh, that, that you've done something wrong. But... To wear it and to wear your faith as, a, um, as something to be proud of. He says, I am not ashamed of the gospel. It's not something that should make us feel shame. And anything that we go through and struggles and difficulties should not make us feel shame. Indeed, they should draw us closer to the heart of our faith. And so he says to him, rekindle. Rekindle the faith that is in you. Um, the, the word in Greek is a little hard to translate. Um, it can mean rekindle, but it can also mean reignite. Uh, there's a difference in those, isn't there? Um, to rekindle is something that is beginning to go out. To reignite is to do something for something that has gone out. Um, not sure which it is that he's encouraging for, for Timothy, but he's, he's writing and saying, um, the faith is not as bright within you as maybe it once was, but rekindle it and let it grow in faith. I'm sure most of you have been out to the lake at one time or another, out um, on a camping trip, and you build a, a fire. And you, you go out there, you built the fire, and you've got it going, and everything's great. And, um, you know, you needed to let it die down a little bit, and you go take care of other things. What happens to a fire um, if you just leave it? It goes out? Yeah, it, it, it will quit burning. Um, Daryl's thinking this is like the children's moment, you know, and we're going to, you know. <laughs> I had a member who said once to me, you know, if you, you keep asking rhetorical questions, one of these moments I'm going to stand up and answer. Uh, uh, the, um, 
if a fire untended will go out. We live in the era of electricity, in the era of natural gas pumped into our homes. And we can have a fire like that. I mean, we got it at any moment. But just imagine 100 years ago, living in Chickasha, you didn't have that electricity. You didn't have natural gas pumped into your house. If, if you didn't tend the fire, it was going to go out. And if it went out, it was going to be work to get it going again. Um, that, that's what he's telling him. Um, there's a naturalness to the faith um, diminishing like a fire. Um, if we don't tend it, it will go out. It will lessen. Uh, we have to rekindle the flame. We have to feed it, right? It needs to, to have another log put on the fire. It needs to be stirred up so that it can uh, bring to life that vitality that it once shared, the life that it gives. Um, he encourages them, don't give up. Don't let the fire go out, but flame it up. Add a little more fuel to it, or else it might. And it's going to be hard to get it going again once we let it go. His words are to uh, have them build the fire up in their lives and to not let it go. There's another equally valid principle that's at work throughout all of creation that the things that we feed will grow. The things that we starve will diminish and die. But the things that we feed will grow and they'll get stronger. Um, like the, the growth of a tree. A tree, if it draws the nourishment from the soil and it gets enough rain throughout the year, will grow on a regular basis. And if you've ever cut down a tree or seen, you know the rings that are there that symbolize each of those years of growth throughout time. Um, if it continues to be fed and continues to get the water, it will grow for a long time. It'll grow and give vitality and beauty and nourishment. But if it, continue, if it lacks that, if it's not fed, or if it doesn't get water, it will diminish and it will die, just like with our faith. So he says to him, rekindle that faith and let it be something you're proud of. Let it be something that is a, an, a, an integral part of your life. Do not be ashamed of it. He calls us, uh, he says, not by our abilities or not by our works. That's what Paul uses, not by our works. We could say it by our abilities, um, but he calls us by his will and his purpose. Uh, God didn't choose us because we have skills or gifts. God chooses us because it is his will. And he wants us to be a part of his life, and he wants to be in our lives, and he wants to share in that kind of intimacy with us. And so it's something we should claim and hold on to, be proud of, that God has claimed us and that God has built this relationship with us. Not because we're so special, because then we think it's about what we can do, but instead because of who God is. If we think it's because of our own skills, then what happens on the day that we fail? Uh, because we will. There are days that we're not going to be able to do it all. Um, then we realize that we've been trusting in ourselves rather than trusting in God. For it's God who is able to give us all of that life and is able to encourage us in our life and purpose. We're called by his purpose, not because of our abilities or who we are. When we're young, maybe we feel that way. I don't know. Um, I, I remember when I had, was in seminary, had a retired bishop who was teaching our Methodist um, history class. And at the end of it, after the class was over, he wanted to meet with each of the students. And, and uh, he, I, I remember he said, he said, Scott, you're a very tall, handsome young man, 
you'll make a fine Methodist minister. And, and, and I, you know, at the time I was, I was a tall and I was a young, handsome man. If those are the qualifiers for ministry, um, though, we're, I mean, I think we're in trouble. Because... Um, I'm not as tall as I used to be. I, I, I hate that. I go to the doctor, and I, you know, used to be 6'2". Now I'm 6'1 and a half. I'm not as tall as I used to be. Um, I'm certainly not as handsome. I'm no longer young. Uh, that just seems to be turning, you know, day by day. Uh, you know, am I less qualified to be a pastor now than those things? I still am a man, although if you measured my T, I guess, maybe you know, it's not as high as it used to be, if that's the sign of manliness in that case. Uh, if we think that the qualifications are because of our outward, who we are, those things are transitory. They leave us. Um, but we're called according to his will and are called according to his purpose. Uh, one of the things. I, I don't know. Maybe you don't even want to know this, but I just will share with you. Uh, pastors, when we talk, you know, get together. I have a friend who's a Disciples of Christ pastor, and he was serving a church, and at the time, he'd, he'd turned 55, and, and um, he said, you know, I have to be careful uh, because I'm at that age now where no one's going to want me. And if I get crosswise with the church I'm serving, then I may not be able to have a church after that because everybody wants a young pastor with a family to come, right? And, and I might not have a place to go. And he said, you, you all are lucky in the Methodist system because you're sent and, you know, they try to match up the gifts and needs. And even there, it doesn't feel as safe as it used to. When I was 35, it felt really safe, you know. Uh, but it, it's different. Uh, you know, those things are just, they're not what, they're not what decide uh, who we are or our calling. Our calling is in Christ. Your calling is in Christ. Our church, our calling is in Christ. And it's not by anything outward or measurable. It's because God has chosen us for his purpose. And we are here for his purpose, not by our ability, but because he loves us. That's pretty simple. He loves us. It's like the most simple thing in the world. Not because we earned his love, just because it's who he is. So he says, you've got this incredible gift, and you've got it there. It's time to rekindle it. Don't let it go out. It's time to strengthen it. It's time to put another log on the fire so that it continues to burn. Because if you walk away, it might go out and you might not ever be able to get it relit. Guard the good treasure that's been entrusted to you. The treasure of his gospel in Jesus Christ. Amen. You will please stand and join me in singing our hymn of response, One Bread, One Body.
Indeed, we have been given and trusted with a fine treasure, God's love and care and grace for us, and all that we've been given in our lives for provision for who we are uh, was granted to us from him. So now as we prepare ourselves for this offering, we offer them up as signs of our lives given in Christ's service. Let these gifts stand as the true measure of our faith returned to God. be seated. And let us now prepare ourselves for communion by joining together in the great thanksgiving. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity and made covenant to be our sovereign God and spoke to us through your prophets. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. 
Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. Your Spirit anointed him to preach good news to the poor, to proclaim release to the captives, and recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, and to announce that the time had come when you would save your people. He healed the sick, fed the hungry, and ate with sinners. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. When the Lord Jesus ascended, he promised to be with us always in the power of your word and Holy Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, he gave thanks to you, and he broke the bread, and he gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, he took the cup, he gave thanks to you, he gave it to his disciples, and said, this is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ has risen, Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with each other, one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit, and your holy church, all honor and glory is yours. Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now with the confidence of children of God, let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. We'd like to invite those who'll be assisting in the choir to come down. Christ invites all of us to come and to feast. It's for its Christ table that we come and share in. As we, we come, we'll receive communion by uh, the common cup. That means you'll be given a piece of bread. Take it, dip it in the cup, eat and receive it. Then kneel and, and at, uh, prayer at the rail if you would like, or simply dismiss yourself back to your seats. In the United Methodist Church, the table of communion is the Lord's. It's not ours. And so you don't have to be a member of this church or any other. Just seek to follow Christ and to share in his love. I invite you to come. The body of Christ broken for
our song is sending forth. Well, as we finish up the service, we want to invite all of you to come over to the Life Center as we share in our fellowship meal. Uh, again, you don't have to have brought anything. The whole thing's provided. So uh, just come and have a, a good time. As we, we do this, let this be our uh, grace and blessing for the meal. And so if they're ready for us, they'll, they'll give us direction, and uh, we will have, have been prayed over. So let us uh, join together. Go in peace, go in kindness, go in love, go in faith, leave the day, day behind us, day is done, go in grace, let us go. Safely. 
Let us hope.